Hello everybody, Adam Lusick here, and today we're going to be talking about synthetic data in the modern era of artificial intelligence and large language models. Over the last couple months, I've started to see a little bit more importance being given towards using synthetic data and generating synthetic data both with language models and for the fine tuning or optimization of language models. Meta has recently released Llama 3.1 405 billion parameter model explicitly states that the new model will enable the community to unlock new workflows such as synthetic data generation and model distillation. And even the model itself was fine tuned and optimized using synthetic data as well. And this trend has even been picked up by people like Gartner, the business analysts that estimate that by 2030, synthetic data will completely overshadow real data and AI models. So I felt it would be important to highlight a little bit of this paradigm shift and explain why and how synthetic data is being used with large language models recently. And then also a little bit about how you can use language models yourselves to generate specific synthetic data for other downstream tasks. So to give a brief overview of what synthetic data is, it's really no new concept when it comes to machine learning. Synthetic data has been used in all sorts of applications, which we'll get into later. But the one liner here coming from IBM is that synthetic data is information that's been generated on a computer to augment or replace real data, usually to improve AI models, protect sensitive data, or mitigate biases. And the reason that's been noted in a few different research papers for why synthetic data might be useful in this day and age is because really with the scale of these language models, we're starting to run out of really usable good data. Looking at this estimation and projection from the paper, will we run out of data? You can see that they've estimated that we've got around 10 to the 14 or 10 to the 15 publicly available tokens that could be used for training large language models. And then here we have the projected size of language models and the amount of tokens that they're actually using to be trained on as they're getting scaled up. And eventually we're going to run into some point, they've estimated around, you know, early 2028 to 2029, a point where we can't scale language models anymore because there just isn't enough raw data out there. And not just quantity of data, but also the quality of data is a big player. If we're looking at all of the text from Common Crawl or all of the text from across the internet, it can include a lot of things like duplicated data, inaccuracies, biases, and then also just general low entropy data as well. We've started to see some approaches to the quality issue. Datasets like FineWeb, which is a deduplicated and cleaned up version of Common Crawl that includes 15 trillion tokens has been released recently. And it's specifically optimized for, you know, language model performance. And we started to see smaller models actually perform much better with more quality filtered down datasets. For example, Gemma 2 9B here, was filtered through with a training data set of 8 trillion tokens, but Google is very rigorous about what content that they were actually using in the training data set. And we've seen this pay off for them as it started to perform very well in comparison to many of the other similarly sized models. And while data curation has gotten us pretty far for the performance of language models, we're starting to see also this trend of using synthetic data to push the performance even more. And so why are these companies using synthetic data and what is it actually kind of needed for? Well, according to the Institute of Electrical Engineering and some researchers over there, they claim that the necessity for synthetic data really arises from the inherent limitations of general purpose LLMs in specialized and private domains, despite their significant achievements across various benchmarks. And essentially what they're saying is that using this massive corpus of data that we have and even the curated stuff, we're able to push these foundational models to perform very well in a generalized environment. However, when we want to actually get down to increasing the language model's ability to perform very domain specific tasks, this is where synthetic data can really help hone in a language model's skills. For example, Alpha Geometry 2, which recently scored silver in the International Math Olympics, was trained using synthetic data to very specifically get better at reasoning through proving and solving out math problems. And now that we understand a little bit of what synthetic data is, where it's being used and why it's important, the next step is also understanding the shift of actually using generative AI systems to generate synthetic data. As language models have started to really progress and get better at generating very realistic text, it turns out that maybe we can use this actual functionality to generate our own synthetic data of any kind. And so we started to see researchers actually take advantage of the generative capabilities of these large foundational models to create synthetic data 
for training smaller parameter models on either generalized or specific tasks. In this example from Microsoft Research, they trained Orca, which is a 13 billion parameter model, to actually start to imitate and use the reasoning capabilities of the foundation model GPT-4 by using the generated instructions and guidance from ChatGPT and GPT-4. IBM took this one step further by releasing Merlinite 7B, which used Mistral 8x7B as a teacher model to actually generate large-scale synthetic data to iteratively tune and align the model on a lot of very domain-specific tasks. And then using this along with fine-tuning on the synthetic data, they were able to get some really competitive benchmarks across the board on some of our generalized evaluations. So then nowadays, we're starting to see this mix of curated data along with very domain-specific fine-tuning through synthetic data produce some really impressive models with really good performance. And this has apparently been working so much so that a lot of these models now are being made to generate the synthetic data themselves. Now, before we start using language models to generate our own synthetic data, I also wanted to highlight some of the other aspects of why synthetic data is used, not just for things like language models. And the first reason is we might want to use actually very sensitive data, things like financial data, health records, or other content that's protected by either privacy or copyright and laws, and data that's not readily available or public for us to access but we still want something like a downstream model to be able to perform well on. This is where synthetic data can really shine with things like, for example, medical imaging. The second use would be using synthetic data for data augmentation or expanding existing data sets. For different tasks that are either very novel or rare, we might not have a lot of data. In this example of this, it's novel viewpoints for autonomous vehicle perception, and there might not readily be a lot of data available to actually train your model on. So this is where you can create synthetic data for very rare cases or long tail problems that might not have a large corpus of data readily available. We can also use synthetic data to mitigate all sorts of different biases, both things like undersampling, which is just, you know, very traditional data biases, but also human induced bias, which is very, very prevalent in things like common crawl or large corpus of texts that are human generated. Along the same lines, you might even want to use synthetic data to actually be compliant with different regulatory actions or acts, things like the EUAI Act, PII anonymization, Works Council, all require different ways of actually training and using different sensitive data. And so coming back to our discussion of actually using language models to generate synthetic data, they can help with all of the aforementioned examples and then a few additional ones. Things like mitigating the cost of generating and creating data is a really big one as having this good annotated data can take a lot of time and a lot of money to create. And then as we've been discussing for the entire first part of this video, we can use these language models and the synthetic data generated to actually train smaller, more specialized models with good results. All that being said, let's hop over to some code and discuss a little bit about how we can use language models to generate our own synthetic data sets. To do this, We'll be using Langchain and their data generation functionality to be able to create data models, pass them in as prompts, and generate some good synthetic data sets. And so the first step to actually creating the synthetic data is to define our data model, which will take the form of a pedantic base model, which essentially will be a class that has all of these different attributes where you can d explicitly define the typing of them. And so I have a few examples here that are all in different scenarios where synthetic data would be very useful. Things like financial transactions, IoT device data, employee records, and also medical records. So let's take a look at one of these. We're going to be looking at the HR one more specifically down the line. So what we might be interested in actually generating for our employee records would be our employee ID, a first and last name, date of birth, gender, email, phone number, a department string, their position, what date they were hired, their salary, a good performance rating, an address, emergency contact even, a list of their skills, and also a list of their education. Of course, this would be very, very sensitive data that would not be readily available in pretty much any public data set at all. It's very, very difficult to get use and also mitigate all of the different issues of using employee records due to their very sensitive nature. So I think this is a perfect example to show how we can actually generate some ourselves. 
And so now that we have our data model for employee records defined out here, what we wanna actually then do is create some examples. And the reason we're going to use examples is because we're going to use few shot prompting for the data generator. And few shot prompting is a very powerful technique of giving the language model explicitly in the prompt examples of what you're actually looking for. This is the perfect way to add your input to define kind of exactly what you want the data to look like as the model is generating it. And providing a few examples will help keep the model in line during that generation phase. With those examples, we'll pass it into a Langchain few shot prompt template that takes a prefix, which our prefix here will be, this is a test about generating synthetic data about a subject, examples below, it'll then take in the examples, and then it'll take in a suffix, which is now you generate synthetic data about the subject, make sure to extra, which we'll get to in a second, a few of the input variables, which will be subject and extra, which we can then use to dynamically insert anything we want into there, and then an example prompt. And this example prompt is just going to take the example when path over to this example part in the dictionary of this list that we're looking at and format it into the right template for our language model to understand. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to take the prefix and then it's going to take our examples, it's going to take the suffix, add them all together in a nice area and also allow us to be able to input a different subject and different extra instructions that we want if necessary down the line. Setting it up this way also allows us to change the subject, whether we're using, you know, maybe medical records and also change the examples and not break anything because it's not explicitly specific for one specific subject. And so once you've got that set up, Langchain makes it very, very easy to actually get going. They have a create data generator function here where you pass in the schema, which in our case will be the base model of employee HR. You pass in the language model, which in my case, I'm going to be using GPT-40. And then it's very, very recommended to use a high temperature so that you can get high variance of the actual generated data. And then the prompt is going to be our few shot prompt template. Generating the results is as simple as using the data generator and calling the dot generate method, which this is where we can pass in our subject and also pass in any extra instructions, which right here, mine is make the name something you would usually not pick. And then you can define how many runs of this you want. So this will return 20 generated HR records. Sweet, so after not too long, we can see that the results come back. They come back as a class, which is our base model here, which is employee HR. And then as you can see, plenty and plenty of text of all of this synthetic data. If we just look at the first result and print all of that, we can see this employee ID. It's Quincy Thompson here, who was born on October 5th of 1992. He's a male, he's in finance, financial analyst, making 72K out here. He was hired in 2018. And this is all completely made up using the language model. And so this is great. Now that we have all of the data like this, we can save it to you know any other format that we want. For example, I just have this that'll save it as a CSV. And if we look right there, now we've got a nice CSV file of all of this synthetically de generated data that we can use for any other sort of specific task we want. I've also gone ahead and ran this full program with all of the other base models. So you can see some things like the financial data that it had with financial transactions, some IOT devices here, things like, you know, maybe a weather station or an air quality monitor and all the good stuff that you'd want, like battery level or firmware versions. I've got the medical records. We've got, you know, Oberon Wu over here who's allergic to penicillin and nuts. Oh, this guy's allergic to dust mites. That's unfortunate. So by now you should have a decent understanding of synthetic data, what it is, how it works, how it's being used right now, and a little bit of how you can start to think about generating your own with large language models. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like. If you wanna see more, go ahead and click that subscribe. And if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you.